What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, we're discussing the current template team going into game week 31. So these are the percentages of ownership in the top 10k that we know from the last game week in game week 30. And the data is all from livefpl.net. Make sure to check out the website. Extremely good. Lots of tools and stuff on there. Um, and we're going to discuss basically, is the template worth keeping? Are there any players that we could maybe look to move on? Obviously, the template is full of players that have just had a double and all or have just played in game week 30 as well so should we look to kind of move those players on or keep them and i've chosen top 10,000 because that is uh, where active managers are right now if we look at overall there'll be lots of dead teams and stuff like that so i've not really looked at that i'm a little bit rusty i haven't recorded a video for a week but hopefully this goes okay i'm going to ease myself in with a template team i know you've like, obviously saw a video on sunday but that was recorded on tuesday so let's see how it goes so we'll start off with the defense i've also put the bench on there as well so Saar Broya, Robertson and Sice were the next um, highly owned players in their position and I actually went for a 3-5-2 for this template team. Obviously it's not necessarily an affordable team but we are just looking at the most popular players. Now Ramsdale's got an injury right now so we don't know until the press conferences exactly what is going to be said about him, when he's going to be back and if you've got a second keeper like a playing keeper on your bench who has good fixtures you can maybe hold on to Ramsdale obviously Arsenal do have that double game week in game week 33 but if he's if he's likely or possibly going to miss that game or that game week I think it might be time to start looking to move him on. Same, to be honest, with SAR owners as well. Like, uh, Wolves will blank in game week 33. Obviously, if you're free hitting that week, it doesn't make so much difference, right? You can bring in any double game week keeper you want. Um, but if you're not, you might want to look to kind of move them on. And I do think that Nick Pope is probably the best option for a goalkeeper if you can afford it, because obviously he is a bit more expensive. Just for those extra fixtures, those extra save points. And Burnley have got a fairly decent kind of end to the season. Like, if I just bring up... Um, the FPL site just really quickly. I've talked about Burnley a lot, and I'm sure we're going to get questions in the game week preview and stuff, so I won't go too mad on them. And I know one of the extra fixtures is Man City. I get that, but extra appearance points, extra save points, it can all come in handy. If it's 5-0 and he makes no save points, okay, maybe we're into negative. But then you've got Everton, Norwich, good fixture. Southampton's a pretty good fixture too. You've got the extra fixture again, which is West Ham away. Then it's Wolves, Watford, Villa, Newcastle. They still have a game against Aston Villa to rearrange as well. Burnley's, Burnley's end of the season is pretty good. Obviously, we don't want to suddenly think that just because they got double game weeks that Burnley is a good defence. But I do think at some point, Sean Dyche will get that team to kind of dig in and try and grind out some results. So I quite like Nick Pope as a replacement. So if Ramsdale's going to be out for a little while, I do think it's possible, uh, possibly a good uh, good chance or good reason, I guess, to start to look to get rid of him. Um I'll come on to Doherty and Tierney in a minute because we're going to talk about Arsenal and Spurs quite a lot. Trent Alexander-Arnold, the latest is, it doesn't look like it's an international break injury. The latest looks as though he is in a race against time, I think that's how it was put, to be fit for Man City. Now, that's in game week 32, so he's not even guaranteed to play that, let alone Watford in game week 31. And if Klopp confirms that, there is a case to be made to sell him, right? People will look at this two ways. One, they really want him long term. They're going to want him from game week 34 onwards. And again, if we just quickly bring out the fixtures long term, from game week 34, they've got Everton, Newcastle, Spurs, Southampton, and Wolves to end the season, and Villa away still to rearrange. So the fixtures from 34 onwards are pretty good. But in 31, if he's missed that, that's obviously a blank. Game week 32, I would say both teams are scoring no clean sheets in that game is how I would look at it. And I even think in game week 33, even if he plays, I could see Man United scoring in that game as well. They'll probably lose, but they'll probably score, right? So there could be no clean sheets for Trent over the next three because obviously he's going to miss that Watford game. So you can look at it both ways. One, well, you've got like over £8 million set on your bench. It's probably a good time to cash in, maybe bring someone else in. The obvious names, Cancelo, Reese James if he's fit, maybe Rudiger, straight to Robertson and just stick with Liverpool could be an option as well. Um, and the other way to look at it is, well, I'm going to want him back game week 34. If you're free hitting in game week 33, that doesn't matter because you can just not own him for that week anyway. And game week 32 is probably going to be a blank. So it might not be the worst thing to keep hold of him. Right now, I'm thinking I'm probably going to sell him. The only thing I don't know is whether I'm going to completely downgrade him and put more money into my attack or just go for a straight swap like Robertson, which is probably what I'd end up doing, him or Cancelo, and then maybe look later on from 34 onwards at getting that Liverpool player back. But it is a lot of money on the bench, so that's kind of the way I'm swaying right now. But And if I had a wild card, I'd be looking at it even more, right? Because if you're going to wild card in game week 34, 
getting rid of Trent now ain't that bad, right? So it's going to depend on how you want to view it. Um, but I think he's sellable if he's going to miss Watford and he's not definitely going to be fit for Man City either. We'll have to wait and see what Klopp says. And then the other two are Doherty and Tierney. So I just want to quickly talk about the fixtures for both these teams. So they've both got one game still to rearrange against each other. So for Arsenal, it would be Spurs away. For Spurs, it's Arsenal at home. Um, Arsenal's fixtures are pretty good. Palace, Brighton, Southampton away, Chelsea away in the double. Obviously, Chelsea's difficult, but you just get an extra fixture there. Okay, Man United and West Ham a little bit more difficult. Then it's Leeds at home. Um, it's not that bad for for kind of a space of six game weeks. And I think if you've got a defender in, like if Ramsdale was fit, or if you've got Tierney, you've got Gabriel, you've got Ben White, I think they are probably players worth holding. The only reason I'd look to upgrade is if it was to get Trent back when he's fit, Robertson, Cancelo, Chelsea defenders and something like that. The only thing is with Chelsea is how many minutes are they going to play? How much do you think Tuchel is going to see the league as done, right? It's not it's not mathematically done. They could still win the title, very unlikely, but they could still do it. And they're not completely safe for top four, but anyone looking at the league knows that they are safe for top four, right? So if Tuchel thinks that as well, Reese James is only back from an injury that he just got after his last injury. If he's going to be rested, it might not be worth going for them and Rudiger is obviously not quite as exciting but we know that Chelsea's fixtures are good so that's maybe where I'd look to upgrade Tierney but I think with Palace, Brighton and a double they're three pretty good fixtures for Arsenal the only worry I guess is if Ramsdale is missing you know will they be as good with uh, kind of Leno in goal with Spurs again I think defensively and bearing in mind Doherty's played three teams in a row I don't think Conte's made any changes for the last three it could be wrong on that but I think it's it's been pretty um, similar 11 in the starting lineup. Newcastle, Villa, Brighton, Brentford, they're all, I know they've got no double yet, and it's probably going to be in game week 36 with Liverpool away and Arsenal at home, which isn't necessarily great. But again, I think those fixtures are probably worth holding. In, again, unless you're going to go to those players I've just mentioned. But with someone like Doherty, his price is quite low. So even if you wanted to go for those other defenders, you could have Doherty sitting as your fourth or fifth defender and just rely on him when needed. So although the template is kind of fixed, and I'm not saying we can't move these players on, it'd only be those kind of premium defenders that I'd really look to do it for. Otherwise, you're probably just better off saving a transfer and keeping them. Okay, so I've gone for a 3-5-2 because I think a lot of people are kind of almost done with forwards at this point unless you've got Harry Kane who we'll come on to in a minute. And I will touch on some of the bench players as well in a sec. I think I think Saar and Sice in particular, like Wolves players, you can probably look to start to get rid of. In midfield, let's go through the obvious picks quickly first. Salah stays, right? If, if Klopp says that Salah's fit for Watford at home, uh, and I do think even with the World Cup, cup qualifies that he will probably play that game as long as he's fit he's the most obvious captain of the week Watford at home you got to keep him right and I think similar with Saka obviously we just looked at the Arsenal fixtures I think he's such a good price and again one of the good things about Arsenal and Spurs versus teams like Liverpool and Chelsea etc is they don't have European matches and I think Saka is such a good price he's nailed to play every single week again we bring up the fixtures that they're actually maybe slightly better defensively uh, fixture wise rather than you know attacking wise but I think once you get I mean Brighton at home not impenetrable right they haven't been playing great recently I think Southampton's perfectly fine they'll give Chelsea a game at least Man United not necessarily always defending well I think the fixtures are good enough to kind of keep hold of Saka I wouldn't really want to get rid of him uh, with Rafinha right and I, I don't want to go too much into Rafinha because it's, it's becoming a bit of a meme I do think we've kind of I think it's Southampton then uh, Watford uh, I think it's that way around. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, Southampton at home, Watford away. I don't think it's worth selling him those two weeks necessarily unless you've got spare transfers and you know, you've know got nothing else to use it on. But for example, if you're going to go for a Leicester midfielder, will they play Man United away this week? Is that better than Southampton at home? I would say no. The only issue is, the only slight issue that I see now, is Bamford is out right? He might only be back for the last one or two games of the season. That is a big miss. One of the reasons I really liked Rafinha was that Bamford was coming back. You know, he makes much more, I don't know, kind of, it's just it's just a higher volume of good runs in behind, right? He's someone that Rafinha can all, not play off because obviously he's playing out wide, but it's just an extra quality player in that squad that they don't necessarily have without him. Um, so that is a bit of a worry, but I just think Southampton at home and Watford away are good enough to keep him. If you were looking to sell him, and if we're looking around ish the same price up to kind of 7.5 8 million then these are the, probably the players you're looking at i do have there's a lot of players on this list i have concerns about minutes for even barnes at the top i do think barnes is slightly better for minutes than madison um 
and obviously with Europe and stuff, that's going to be important for Leicester. I spoke about that on the fixtures video. There could be rotation in game week 32. There could be rotation the first game of game week 33 as well. We sometimes kind of overestimate how much a manager is going to rotate. But I think for Leicester, there could be quite a bit because Europe is important for them. Um, so Barnes and Madison, I would probably go Barnes still right now. Um, but if you thought that Madison was going to get the same minutes, you might want to look at him instead. Obviously, the same with Havertz. So I put Mount on my watch list video. If Havertz is going to get the if you think that Havertz is going to get the same minutes as Mount or more, and you think they're going to get enough minutes, like obviously between them, then Havertz probably is the better pick. He's the more exciting pick as well, playing number nine. Um, and, and like I said before, I do think he is the first choice number nine. Uh, I just don't necessarily think that means he plays every game because if he needs to be rested for Europe. They can just bring Lukaku in instead. I mean, that is not a bad backup, right? I know the way they've been playing recently, they play better with Havertz in the side, but Lukaku could still play at some point and they could probably beat some of these teams because the fixtures are good, but if the fixtures are good, they're slightly easier. It probably means you can rotate a little bit more. And again, Europe's pretty important when it looks like they're just going to finish top four, not win the league. You might as well go for the Champions League, right? Uh, and, I, and I guess you could say the same for Foden. I think Foden has played more minutes in the league than the likes of Mares, Sterling, Grealish. I do think he's fairly nailed in Pep's best eleven. But again, will he see some kind of rotation? So if you don't have Saka, I still think he's a good player to move for. Um... And I think his minutes are just much more secure than Barnes and Madison over the next kind of three game weeks where they've both got a double in 33 anyway. And also the fixtures are probably slightly better too, right? Apart, I know the Chelsea away game is difficult, but outside of that, they're probably better and Arsenal are playing better than Leicester as well. So if you haven't got Saka, he looks obvious. Although a lot of people, obviously, as we just saw in the template, have already got him. Otherwise, you've got Zaha. Like Crystal Palace do have some pretty good fixtures to end the season. They've still got one game to rearrange. Whether or not I would go for him, I'm not sure. Zaha's always one of those players that he just never seems... <laughs> I, I, obviously, this doesn't make any kind of logical sense, but he just never seems to do anything when you own him. Um, and, he, and he does when you don't. Um, but Leicester... Newcastle, Leeds, Southampton, Watford. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that as a fixture run, right? Uh, and they still have Everton away again, which is a really good fixture right now um, to rearrange. So I don't mind Zaha. He's fairly nailed. I think a bit like um, Saka on this list. Minish, you're not worried about them getting into the team sheet, right, every single week. The rest of them, you might be slightly worried, some more so than others. But I, I really think if you own Rafinha... You just keep him for the next two. Um, with Son and Kudaseski, I think the same thing as Doherty. The fixtures are there. You probably can just hold on to them. Uh, and I think the fact that like Rafinha blanks, like if you own Rafinha and Kudaseski, Rafinha probably is the one to get hold of. Uh, oh, sorry, to get rid of first. And if I just quickly come back to the replacements, like there's not too many options that are kind of like I would guarantee points from for a similar price to Kulisevsky. So I think if you've got him, you probably just hold on to him. And and this is one thing I found when looking through this template. It is pretty hard to break it right now. Even if you wanted to go a bit more gung-ho for game week 33 and go for some differentials like doubling up on Madison and Barnes, there's a risk of rotation. If you wanted to go for Man United midfielders, well, Sancho might be okay, but he's a lot more money than someone like Kudasevsky, Saka and Rafinha. So you're having to sacrifice elsewhere. Um, so as much as I'd like to like really move on from the template, I do think it's going to be difficult to kind of fully convert these players over to other ones soon. And I think I think Son you can probably just hold on to now. You've probably made that decision, most of you, for Son versus Kane. I think he's I think he's perfectly fine to hold on to. And if we just bring up the forwards, so the three forwards in the squad are Kane, Jimenez, and Broya. I think is probably okay to hold on to because his price is just so cheap. There aren't many better options than him up front for less money. At some point, maybe we go 3-5-2 and just absolutely tank that position and get a 4.5 million forward in. But I think right now, if you've got Broya. As long as he keeps starting, you're probably okay. It's Leeds this week. That's fine. He can't play in game week 32 because it's Chelsea and he's on loan. But after that, you know, there's a double game week. If he plays both of those games, that's pretty good value. So you probably hold on to him. Jimenez is completely different, right? He's suspended for game week 31. Just not a great option going forward. The problem is there just aren't too many forward options really right now. Like Puki, no one really wants to buy. If you already own Broya, do you really want Adams as well? I'm not sure you do. Um, Antonio, obviously West Ham still in Europe. Uh, I think Antonio got bought off. I think the last game I saw him play got bought off at like 60 minutes for Yarmolenko. Um, 
and so they have got that kind of player now that Moyes is maybe a little bit happier to come in and play at times. I don't think Antonio is going to start on the bench anytime soon. I think he's always going to be in the first 11, but the minutes now will be in the back of my mind. No double. Next three are okay. Then it gets a little bit trickier. No Bowen right now either. I don't think I'd go there. I'd really want to see Calvert-Lewin just get a run of starts before I look to bring him in. Like Possibly as a punt for the double in game week 31 could be an option. But the fixtures afterwards, if we just quickly bring them up for Everton, are just not that great. Now, they do have more fixtures to rearrange. But straight after the double, it's Man United, Leicester, Liverpool, Chelsea. It just ain't ideal right now for a player that we haven't really seen get a, a proper run 90 minutes after 90 minutes after 90 minutes for a long time. If he was fully fit, Calvert-Lewin would probably be at the top of this list for me. Uh, and if you wanted to take a punt and you hope that over the last couple of weeks he's obviously proved his fitness and stuff like that, then happy days. But that would worry me a little bit. And then you've got Chris Wood, who's got a double in 33. Pretty decent double as well. Um, you could look to go for. I, I think, to be honest, when I sell Jimenez, if I sell Jimenez, which I probably will this week, I've got two free transfers. There's a little bit of kind of um, changes I can make in my team. I could sell Trent. I could sell Jimenez as well. I think I will go Veghorst. I just think those extra couple of fixtures, I know they're Man City and West Ham, but the fixtures outside of that are just pretty good. Like I spoke about with Pope, um, and I think maybe even more so from an attacking point of view, right? If you just think, okay, Veghorst is going to get a couple of extra appearance points against Man City. Happy days. Then he's got a really good fixture against Everton at home. A really good fixture against Norwich. And then, okay, appearance points or whatever against West Ham. Not great, but it's still extra points. And then Southampton at home. And then Watford still to come. Like They're just pretty good fixtures. I, I, I'm not getting too excited about Veghorst. But if we are looking to get a player in to play and not just to like tank our bench like get a 4.5 million forward on this list right now he probably is the one i would bring in right now um calvert lewin would be the one i'd want if if he just had slightly better fixtures and had proved his fitness more recently i think it's got to be veg course and, and i know that sucks but i think that is probably a move you can make so if we're looking at the template i think kane son kudasevsky saka they're probably all players that can stay. I think Doherty and Tierney, exactly the same as well. They're more than um, okay to keep in your side as long as you're not doing it instead of getting Cancelo, for example, or instead of getting Robertson, who's obviously in the template as well. Breuer as well, probably okay. I think Ramsdale and Sai can maybe look to move to, to Nick Pope. Salah's probably got to stay as well. And Rafinha, I think... Next two fixtures, even without Bamford, Southampton and Watford are probably are probably decent. And then we start to kind of look at this list and maybe go elsewhere. And again, minutes are going to be huge for the last few weeks of the season. If you are someone that think Havertz starts every single Premier League game for the next kind of four or five, well, just to bring up the fixtures, right, we'll see why that would be like a really good move. I know he's a bit more expensive. Um, but Brentford, Southampton, obviously Arsenal in 33, then West Ham, Everton as well straight after that. they got Watford last game of the season. They've still got Leicester and Leeds to rearrange as well. They're really good fixtures. So if you're looking at your kind of or, or the template, and you want to get someone different in, then Havertz or Mount, whoever you think is going to play the most, are both really good options. It just depends how much they're going to play. Same with Barnes and Madison. So let me know what you think about the template. It is pretty boring, right? We're all loaded on Spurs. we loaded on Arsenal. We've always got Liverpool in our team. How many of those are you looking to sell soon? And who are you going for? Is there any big differentials? Let me know in the comments below. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you are new around here as well. I'll have more videos covering the rest of this week right up until Saturday's deadline. It's good to be back, even though you only saw me on Sunday. But again, I haven't recorded for a week. So hopefully that was all right. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you soon.